Hey folks, in this video, we're going to take a look at Notebook LM, which is this really fascinating tool from Google that I've been playing with and it's very much nerding out. So you can go to a search engine, put in Notebook Google and click the first link, or you can go to notebooklm.google and up here in the right hand corner, so long as you have a Google account, you can try the notebook. So what this is, is this is really an opportunity to create essentially like a research space where you're working with a set of documents, resources, etc. Uh, that are all within a particular space and using AI to really engage with them and try to figure out what they're saying and cite them. And, and we're going to take a look at all that. So when you come in, the first thing you will notice, you will have these four notebooks already. So you can go in and start playing with them and making sense of them. I'm actually going to create a new notebook, walk you through how and what that looks like. So I'm going to click on new notebook and right off the bat, it's going to give us a bunch of different choices. So I can do the traditional like drag and drop or choose file and upload a bunch of documents. And you should know they take uh, Google uh, notebook does about 50 documents that of course may change at a different point, but for now, that that's roughly what we're looking at. Um, you can also attach Google Docs or Google Slides that are in your drive. You can do a website, although I haven't played with this a lot, but it looks like it might just focus on a page and not necessarily the entire website, but I'm going to play around with that more as, as we go through this. And then also if you have just a large text, like a very large text that you've copied and you want that to be part of your notebook, but I am going to actually take a bunch of stuff from a, a new collection of resources known as NC Sarah. And for those not uh, as nerdy as me, this is a this is a national agreement around online learning and how different colleges and institutions can and should work uh, effectively to make sure students in other states are protected in all the ways that they should in taking online courses in states that they don't live in. So I'm going to just upload a bunch of documents from their resources. And you notice over here on the left side, they are starting to update and then they all have these check marks. And so what the check marks mean over here on the left is that when I start typing, it's going to look to all of these for an answer. Now, if I don't want all of these, maybe I just want to choose one document. For instance, this is the policy manual. If I just want to work on this and say, you know, um, ask it, what are the five essential steps a college must do before even pursuing uh, NC Sarah regulations, right? It's just a random question I'm throwing in there. What a college need to do beforehand? So I'm going to throw that in. And again, I'm just selecting this particular document on the left. I'm not selecting all of these. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to do a little calculating. It isn't like some of the other AI tools where it's just going to like start to show immediately. It's, it's going to wait and then all of a sudden it's going to drop. Now, what's really interesting, what's really cool about this is that it gives you, its it cites its sources, right? So each of these points uh, have a, you know, we have essentially two things, two areas are, are cited here. So if I click on that one, I mean, if I hover over it, it will start to show me. But if I click on it, it's actually going to show me directly where within the document it shows up and where it's drawing from. Similarly to number two, oh, that's drawing from here. If I wanted to ask it another question, um, who in uh, my institution should lead this effort? It may not know this. This is one of the interesting things. It also focuses only on the documentation, the, the resources that you provide, right? So this is different from a lot of the other LL, uh, large language models where it will actually uh, draw beyond the resource. But here, um, here it actually sticks to the document. So here it's giving some particular recommendations. So if I click on one, it's gonna tell me where it's getting that answer. And notice it has, in this case, up to 13 different places that it's citing from. So it is really interesting to see, you know, it tells you these are the people that should be involved. It gives some additional guidance, that's all great. I can X out this. And so this runs like a chat log just in relation to this particular document. But again, I can go across all of the documents and also notice up here, it 
gives me some other questions I could ask, right? It provides those suggested questions. So I'm going to do this one. Under what conditions, uh, under what are the conditions of which a state can approve an institution for provisional SARA participation? So I'm going to click on that. Once again, it's going to kind of go through its thinking. While it's doing that, I want to just note uh, they all have a couple different things here that you can copy and paste the, the, the text. You can say whether it was a good or bad answer. You can save to note. And so I'm going to, this next, uh, this next response, Oh, this is the next response. It just popped up immediately. Didn't even see it. Um, so it provides some information. I'm going to save this as a note. And so what you'll start to see now is you can actually start to collect notes. You can also add notes. So if there's information from elsewhere that you want to add, maybe maybe this is you starting to write up your plan. You can say, um, you know, key concerns at my institution and then type in some text blah 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 right all right that's a note there perfect it's all you know these are these are things saved again this tells me what's the citations so this is again i can start to pull together different things i can click on one if i click on one notice again down here it shows me oh, oh you know one note is chosen or two notes is chosen whenever i start to to, to talk like whenever i put in uh, my next prompt, it's going to draw on the notes. It's also going to draw on these items over here. Actually, I, I apologize. No, it's just going to focus on the notes right now. This is what's really cool is it tells you what it is and isn't focusing on. So I would take those out. Maybe I'll select these or maybe I'll select a source source. Uh, see, that's an interesting thing. It doesn't look like you can do notes and the details over on the side. So that's worth uh, just keeping in mind. All right. You can always go back to the chat, it shows you what your most recent chat is. Now, the real interesting thing is once you get started up in the guy, once you get started up in a notebook, um, you also have this thing over here called notebook guide. And when you click on it, here it, it automatically defaults to, hey, let's let's help you set up a few things here. Uh, let's help you set up you know an faq a study guide a table of contents so i'm gonna just say let's start up with uh an faq see see what it comes up with all right so once again it'll take a few so a few seconds to do that and while it's doing that i'm gonna actually just name this as my nc sarah notebook and we can again wait a little bit more i'm gonna pause it till we get that oh never mind here it is and so here again it gives me a Eight question FAQ of what of what NC Sarah is. That looks interestingly enough. But I really want to show is when we go into notebook guide, over here on the right we have audio overview. And it says deep dive conversation to hosts English only. I imagine the the piece, you know, this will change, but this is a, something that was released recently here in September 2024. And if I select generate. It's going to actually, it'll take a moment or two, but it's going to actually create essentially like a 10 minute podcast. So uh, we're going to hold on and see what that looks like in just a moment. All right. So I'm back and this took about four or five minutes to, to, to actually create. Now, my guess would be uh, you could do it, walk away and come back as the, the text suggested, but let's play and take a listen at this, this sound. I'm going to play it for about at least 30 seconds. I might jump ahead a little bit as well just to give you a sense of what it sounds like later. So let's go. All right, so we've got a stack of documents here all about interstate education regulations, uh, specifically focusing on distance education and professional licensure. It looks pretty intense, but this is really important stuff, especially for anyone out there thinking about offering online courses or running programs that could lead to professional licenses across state lines. Yeah, you've really hit the nail on the head there. It's a surprisingly complex landscape, and there are definitely some potential pitfalls if you're not careful. Exactly. So let's start unpacking some of these acronyms right off the bat. Mm. We've got SARA popping up everywhere. So what is SARA, and why should we care? SARA stands for the State Authorization Reciprocity Agreement. And essentially, it's there to simplify things for schools offering online courses in multiple states. It's on quality control. It's exactly. While SARA focuses on authorizing institutions to operate across state lines, CRAC is more about ensuring those institutions are actually meeting certain quality benchmarks in their in their 
Essentially, they have to more about these public disclosures. Think of it like a nutritional label. But for your degree, program, institutions need to have a clear and ex So that is all AI generated, right? That is that is not two real people, obviously. That is uh, two two computer voices doing that back and forth banter. And I've done this a few times. It's interesting. They do manage they do you listen to I've listened to a few of them and there is certainly a uh, a rhythm, a kind of template that they're working from, but they also make the content accessible. Um, and I've played around with different types of content, content that's a little bit more intense, a little bit more uh, sensitive, and they do a little bit more nuance. Uh, they do emote differently depending on the topic. So it's really interesting to see what comes of this. Um, Again, if it's good or bad, you can kind of give that, but you can also change the playback if you want to listen to it slower or faster, but you can download it or delete it. So if you delete it, you'll just have it do it again um, in, or select a different, uh, different actual files for it to, to source from. So uh, it's really interesting. I think for me, I'm excited about this because I could see this being really cool in the classroom as a primer, as a way of really uh, showing folks, you know, get, helping students access some dense materials or kind of like a warm up to step into a resource uh, or a set of documents and stuff. But yeah, this is Google Notebook. I'll be, I will be, or Notebook LM. I will be curious to hear from folks, your thoughts, your experiences, what you've been doing it and the like. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have questions and thank you so much.